So he's amassed a raft of platinum plated hits, 8 billion streams, 40 million single sales, and five Brit Award nominees. Let's give it up for record producer, artist, songwriter, DJ, Mr. Jonas Blue. Hey guys, how are you? You're interested, you've got a, a good sense of the business as well, and do you think that's an essential character for, uh, for artists? 100%, even more so in this day and age, with the industry changing every few months. You know, I always said that if, had I not been an artist, I would, I would have been behind the desk, you know, in, in, in the music business, you know, because I love the, you know, the business side of music. Um, and uh, yeah, it definitely plays a vital role in, in, in you know, the way I make my music, the way we put it out. Um, it's very important. And, and yeah, even more so in this day and age, it's not like 30, 40 years ago where the business was, you know, it was, it was run in a certain way. You know, we've got digital platforms popping up every, every few years. And all of a sudden, you know, the industry changes. You know, we, most of our official chart is based on the Shazam chart. Try telling people 30 years ago that you know our chart would have been based on people putting their phones up to a speaker trying to tag a song. You know, it, it would have been. It's our business is changing the whole time, so being aware of what's going on and being involved is is absolutely crucial. Let's say, let's not look too far, but what do you think is going to be important for music or the music industry in the next say five years? Like, what is the thing that you're going to say? Right, this is going to be like in our world, it's like data in tech world, you know, it's, that's super important, or AI or something, but what do you think to music? music? I, I don't think, I think we're at a point now with, you know, with data being the main format, I don't think that's going to change. Mm. You know, I think, I think, you know, it, it being these digital platforms and things, it, that, that's going to, that's here to stay, for sure. I think it's almost gone back to being a really kind of, you can't be a generic kind of pop artist, you know, maybe you know, like when, when we went through kind of the boy band phase or the, or the girl band phase where it was very generic, very put together. It's all about, you know, very, very cool, creative, new artists. It's kind of gone back to what it was back in the days. So I think just make sure that, you know, what you're doing is, is, is really different. But um, where it's going, I, you know, I think, I think tech, you know, we were just speaking about it backstage. Is, it's mad because you, I don't think really back then you would have put music and tech mm -hmm. data in the same category mm -hmm. but you know people like Daniel Eck from Spotify you know have absolutely changed the game you know when you had like LimeWire and Napster people people didn't have a clue what was going on you know people in the, in, in, in the labels didn't have a clue what was going on and all of a sudden you get some smart tech guy Daniel Eck come around and create Spotify so yeah I think digital platforms are here to stay what about AI in music I know that's a controversial what's your thoughts on that yeah it's uh, against it no 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 I'm absolutely for it it's another way of getting music out there and getting it heard you know if people have said to me oh we heard your song on TikTok great I'm not going to be against that, am I? <laughs> I, I? I think it's great. You know, it's it's another platform to get your music out there, and they're only they're only there's going to be so many more of these, you know, yeah. and they will come and go as they do. But I think data tech platforms are are, are the future and here to stay. If we just think about production and songwriting for a, for a minute, is there anything that you try to put into? Uh, like what are your top three things that you try to put into a song if you're writing a new tune? Okay, so my top things that go into, you know, making a new song of mine would be a technique that I'd kind of uh, learn from one of my idols, which is Max Martin. <laughs> it stemmed back to, it's going to be so crazy because, you know, people think, oh my God, like, you know, the dance artist. But one of my favorite songs is Britney Spears, Baby One More Time. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. And this is it, fantastic. The the thing with that record, right, is that no one understands that when you press play on that record, you instantly know what it is. There's no wait in thirty seconds or mm -hmm. you know, as soon as that comes in and those two two piano notes come in, you're you're in. And that stemmed back from his mentor, a guy named Dennis Pop, saying, you know, he was a DJ in the, in the clubs, this Dennis Pop, and basically said that when he would play records in the club, he wouldn't want people to hang around on the dance floor and possibly lose them. So the idea was that if he would play a record, 
they p people on the floor would instantly know what it is. So that's why they made songs like Baby One More Time instant, you know, that come in. That technique really, really stuck with me. So if you listen to any of my records now, whether it's Mama, Rise, as soon as you hit play, you, you're, you instantly know what it is from the, the, you know, the piano melody or the synth melody, and that stems from those records. The crazy thing is, is that that idea was implemented from him not losing people on the dance floor. Yeah. Yeah. For me, that works for me not losing people on the playlists. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when New Music Friday is released on Spotify or, you know, Best of, Friday, Best of New Week on, on Apple Music, I don't want to get, you know, there's, there's, a, there's 50, 60 songs in that weekly that change. And we have things, it's really boring, we have things called skip rates. It's how quickly you guys would skip a record. I don't want you guys to skip my record. I want you to stay on my record. So the idea is, is that you hit play, you're hooked, you're in. Yeah. And that stems from that. <coughs> so that would be the first thing. Um, the second thing would be, um, would be lyric. Simple lyrics, but credible. It's... You know, I, I go in with some of the biggest songwriters in, you know, in L.A. or, you know, wherever, you know, in all these incredible places. As songwriters, you know, you really, you know, you want to write something which is really edgy, something really different. And I'm like, I want to write something which is really, really simple. And they are the hardest things to write because, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of easy to write something edgy and be weird, you know, and, and come up with those weird lyrics. But to create a song like Rise, which is a very, very simple song, but yet so credible is so so difficult so for me that's the key is making simple songs uh, simple lyrics should i say that are, that are new and different but you know i could go to india i could go to brazil and people understand that lyric yeah. you know i've had things before where i'll go to you know japan is one of my you know one of my biggest territories i'll go there and i'll ask you know random people do you understand what what I like about you means? And then you say like, what about Rise or Mama? And they're like, ah, oh, yeah. So those things yeah. stick yeah. with me about how simple a lyric can translate around the world. But d you know what I'm saying is just how well a lyric can translate and for it to be understood worldwide is very, very crucial to me. And then the third thing, probably melody. If you were a new artist now, if you start out now, how do you go about like gaining exposure, getting the attention of people who may like your music or people who can help you out in the industry, especially in today's climate with so much competition going on and also maybe on a low budget? How do you go about that? I think for me, you know, I'm always on the lookout for new artists constantly now. You know, as, as much as I've you know, been very fortunate and been able to collaborate with some incredible established acts, I'm just as much looking for the next big thing, always. Same with many people in the, in the music business and the record labels. So, you know, again, going back to the the platforms, you know, I think you were saying people who come up to me and say, oh, you know, my song is on Spotify. Doesn't mean much. Doesn't really, you know, it's great, yeah. Yeah. but doesn't really mean much at an early stage, you know, because anyone can get their songs on Spotify and it's Apple Music really and things like that. Right. It's so wherever the music's right, but how to gain exposure, you have to look at how people are being noticed. And I think, you know, back in, but, uh, you know, there's still a lot of people from the record labels going to bars and you can do the classic thing, you know, being the live musician and going out and performing on stage. But me, more so, I don't really go out to find new artists. I'll just be on YouTube and I'll be on Instagram. And the thing that I look for is covers of my favourite songs. And again, within five to ten seconds... I'll know if someone's good. Th those are two kind of great platforms, you know, Instagram and YouTube to, to really get out there and, and get the exposure. Originals, I, you know, I would do it as well with a blend of original songs and covers, you know. But don't be like too much where you, because I've had it before where you end up becoming a YouTube cover artist or an Instagram cover artist, you know. Just keep it, just keep it really kind of short and, and, and down to the point and maybe have a couple of originals, a couple of covers, and, and work them. And, you know, they do get out there. There's people hunting around online. <laughs>